I'm Rick Besson, Extension Specialist in the UK Department of Entomology. With this short video, I'm providing a quick update on the status of pesticide use on hemp in Kentucky and discussing the processes to get additional pesticides approved. Currently, there's a lot of confusion with regard to pesticide use on hemp in Kentucky. Part of this may be due to state lead agencies that oversee pesticide use in each state as they may interpret regulations differently. As a result, available pesticides for hemp may vary from state to state. In addition to the legal aspects, different hemp buyers may impose different restrictions on what, if any, pesticide applications they will accept. On top of these considerations, we're waiting to see how the Food and Drug Administration will classify hemp, either as a drug or a food additive. This will have major implications with respect to pesticide use. There is also some uncertainty with several large chemical companies. These are called registrants, as they submit petitions to register pesticides and their uses with the EPA. Several of these companies are waiting until they understand how pesticides will be regulated on hemp before submitting applications. One large company is pursuing labels, but only for hemp grown for fiber and non-food uses. Keep in mind that we need to have full support of the respective registrants in order to begin the process to get pesticides approved for hemp. In order for a pesticide to be used on hemp, it must meet three criteria. It must have federal EPA approval. It must be registered each year by the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, and it must meet the approval of your hemp buyer. There is a group of pesticides exempt from EPA approval. These are known as the minimum risk pesticides or 25B pesticides. Their active ingredients are exempt from EPA approval. While current products available for hemp largely come from this list, they still need to be registered each year for Kentucky so the list of available products may change from year to year. From a legal point of view, pesticides can only be used as listed on their labels. So if the crop is not on the label, it is not approved for that crop. You cannot go above the rate listed on the label or apply it closer to harvest than allowed by the pre-harvest interval. As of August 2019, there are only five pesticides that listed hemp or industrial hemp on their labels, but only two of these were registered in Kentucky. There are a few minimum and minimal risk pesticides that allow use on unspecified crops. Their directions for use include statements like, and other crops, crops listed but not limited to, and crops such as. We are very fortunate that the Kentucky Department of Agriculture is providing guidance on which pesticides meet these criteria and are approved for use on hemp. These are listed on the KDA website and the list is updated as additional products are approved. The KDA also notes that for other pesticides to be considered for use on hemp, their label must allow for use on unspecified crops. The label must allow for application to the intended site, such as field or greenhouse and the label does not prohibit use on crops for human consumption, and that they are applied by a licensed applicator. To get a pesticide registered by the EPA, it is done through FIFRA, the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act. This law allows for three different types of registrations. The first is the Section 3 registration. This is what you see on nearly every pesticide label, and I consider it the gold standard. It's good until the product is re-registered or canceled. The next is the Section 18, also known as the emergency or crisis exemption. This is declared by the state and is considered very quickly by the EPA. This is valid if approved for only one year. Growers need to have the Section 18 label when making these applications. However, the EPA has stated that hemp will not be eligible for Section 18 considerations. The last is the State Local Needs Registration, or 24C. A food tolerance must already exist, and this is issued by the state and approved within 90 days by the EPA. These are valid for three years. As with the Section 18, growers must have the 24C label in hand when making these applications. 
from the list of approved products for hemp in Kentucky, five of those products were granted through the 24C process. To use these, the applicators must have the 24C label, be a certified applicator, and should check for their hemp buyer for approval. Getting Section 3 labels is the best approach. With the Section 3 label, we know the product has been fully tested for safety and effectiveness. Usually the pesticide registrar does this with most major crops and major uses. For smaller crops and minor uses, the registrar may do this, or the IR4 program may take this on in cooperation with the registrant. IR4 facilitates registration on minor crops for which the registrant may choose to not register their product. Using either track, it usually takes three to four years to get EPA approval and to make it onto the pesticide label. At our July hemp day last year, the EPA announced that they were considering 10 new pesticide registrations for hemp. These are the first registrations to be considered on hemp by the EPA. Last month, the EPA approved these registrations and these should begin appearing on these respective products soon. IR4 at its summer food use workshop, several hemp residue trial studies were approved. This included one herbicide and one fungicide. This is among only 42 projects advancing out of approximately 1,000 projects across all commodities nationally. An additional fungicide project was approved as an upgrade. This means that this summer, residue trials will be conducted in support of petitions to the EPA for Section 3 labels for two fungicides and one herbicide. Again, this process takes three to four years, but the process has started. The R4 project is also funding an efficacy trial this summer to screen insecticides this summer against lepidopterous pests such as corn earworm, yellow-striped armyworm, and European corn borer. This is a list of the IR4 projects approved for testing in 2020. You can see the types of projects IR4 program supports and the competition with the hemp projects. Near the end of the list, you can see the two successful hemp projects. These needed support from the registrants as well as consensus from the attendees at the food use workshop to make it to this list. While these projects were supported, there's a lot of work to be done. The methods and procedures to measure residues on hemp and hemp byproducts need to be developed. Some of this will depend upon how the FDA ends up classifying hemp, either as a drug or a food additive. The EPA and the IR4 project will be working together to develop these residue testing protocols. In terms of trying to get future pesticides approved, one step will be to let your state IR4 liaison know of your needs. For Kentucky, I am the IR4 liaison. You need to identify the problem as well as a potential solution or solutions. We then create a PCR or pesticide clearance request to make it a potential project. The next step is to rally support from other states for the project at the regional and national meetings. There are a number of minimal use pesticides that may be relatively easy to get state local needs approval through the IR4 process. Several of these already have 24C approval for hemp that were approved last year. To get these started, you need to contact your extension specialist. Again, this is a portion of the list of active ingredients with residue tolerance exemptions. Registrants must support these to obtain Section 3, 24C, or Section 18 registrations. So the pesticides available for 2020 include a number of minimum risk materials and an increasing list of 24C registrations of minimal risk materials. But we are also waiting to see how the FDA will regulate hemp and its byproducts and how the registrants will support these uses in the future. Thank you.